Hey everyone, I'm Ashton, a family and emergency nurse practitioner and one of the instructors with SMNP Reviews. I am so excited to talk about a couple of pediatric dermatologic conditions that you'll want to be familiar with not only for practice but also for your certification exam. Today we're going to review a few basics, but if you want to take a deeper dive into this topic, definitely check out one of our review courses. Also be sure to click that subscribe button so you don't miss out on our latest videos. First up, let's talk about impetigo. This condition is a very contagious superficial bacterial infection of the skin. The most common pathogens are Staphylococcus aureus and Streptococcus pyogenes. Impetigo is most commonly seen in children specifically ages two to five years old, and is most prevalent in warm, humid conditions. Impetigo is easily spread among individuals in close contact. Other risk factors include poverty, overcrowding, even poor hygiene. And there are actually two types of impetigo. Do y'all remember what those are? Yep, bullous and non-bullous impetigo. And extra exam tip here, I would be sure to know how to recognize a picture and description of both bolus and non-bolus impetigo. In cases of non-bolus impetigo, lesions begin as papules that evolve into vesicles. These vesicles then become pustules that enlarge and break down to form thick, honey-colored crusted lesions. These lesions tend to be localized and are most common on the face and extremities. Now what about bolus impetigo? With this type, the vesicles enlarge to form bulla with clear yellow fluid, which later become dark and eventually rupture. Most cases of impetigo can be diagnosed clinically based on the appearance of lesions. However, a culture or gram stain may be obtained in more complicated cases to determine the underlying pathogen and to help guide treatment. Topical therapy, such as mupirocin ointment, is used for patients with limited skin involvement, whereas oral therapy is reserved for patients with numerous widespread lesions. Some options I'm thinking of are cephalexin, also known as Keflex, and dicloxacillin. However, if methicillin resistance, Staphylococcus aureus, or MRSA is suspected, we'll need a heavy hitter antibiotic such as trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole, also known as Bactrim DS, clindamycin, which is also known as cleosin, or doxycycline, which we also know as vibromycin. Next up, atopic dermatitis, also known as eczema, is a chronic, pruritic, inflammatory skin disease that occurs most frequently in children. This condition is often associated with an elevated serum level of immunoglobulin E, or IgE. Risk factors include a personal or family history of atopy and environmental exposures such as climate, air pollution, and water hardness. The hallmark signs and symptoms of atopic dermatitis are dry skin and severe pruritus. However, it's important to note that the clinical presentation is highly variable depending upon the patient's age, ethnicity, and even the severity of the condition. A five-year-old child with a history of asthma and allergic rhinitis presents with pruritic, dry, erythematous lesions on the face and extensor surfaces. What diagnosis should the nurse practitioner be concerned about? Think for a moment about some of the key words in this question. Pruritic, dry, erythematous lesions on the face and extensor surfaces. Those words immediately make me think of what? Atopic dermatitis. Patients with atopic dermatitis may develop what is known as the atopic triad, which is a typical sequence of atopic dermatitis, allergic rhinitis, and asthma that occur at certain ages. And as you study for boards, I would definitely be familiar with all of the conditions involved in the atopic triad, which we cover extensively in our courses. There are several more pediatric dermatologic topics to review for your exams, but I hope this video helps you grasp a few of them. If you're interested in learning more about pediatric derm topics and how to pass your boards, definitely check out one of our review courses. 
And if you are looking for an amazing free community of students prepping for boards just like you, make sure to join our Facebook group. And these will be linked in the description. And here are our references and image attributions. And that's it for this video. You are so close to becoming a real deal NP. Be sure to check out our other videos. And at SMNP Reviews, we truly believe that with the right preparation, you can totally pass your boards. We are rooting for you.